My name is Glenn Humphrey. I'm an artist designer. Hello, I'm Dennis Rodham. I've been an artist for about four years now. Mark Hadlett. I've been an artist most of my adult life. I'm Beverly, Beverly Smith, and I've been an artist forever. I'm Amanda Hadlett. I'm not so much the artist as I do all the finishing work. My name's Mags Guy Jobson, and I've been an artist for about 30 years. My name's Helen Gaunt. I've been a self-employed artist for about 20 years. I'm Mark Hickson, and I'm one of the directors of Palace Arts, a community interest company based in Redcar. It started because we had the opportunity to operate a gallery in Redcar on a short-term basis in 2013. That was a success and we had a repeat of that opportunity and effectively what happened was we ran a series of pop-up exhibitions in the space on the Redcar seafront. But in order to be able to plan longer term, it was essential really that we had a longer term lease on the space. So in 2014 it would be, we finally managed to get the council to agree to allow us to use the space that we operate the gallery in for a five-year period and at that time uh, we set up a community interest company in order effectively to move Palace Arts forward over that five-year period. We do have fairly strong links now with a number of other galleries and that's very important to us because we feel that uh, the various galleries and arts community groups and so on in the region need to network, need to talk together, need to share what they're doing and ultimately lead, need to speak with one louder voice to the world beyond uh, the North East. So we operate quite closely with, for instance, the Saltburn Artists Project in Saltburn. Um, Saltburn Artists Projects is generally um, for local artists, uh, there's, there's about 14 studios in there. Um, I was there for a good 13, 14 years, so I was there a long time. So I kind of saw quite a few artists come and go doing different varieties of artwork. I think it's kind of growing as, as time goes on, the, the connection there between Saltburn and Redcar. The, the, there is a connection because we're, we're just a mere five miles away. So I think the advantage of having somewhere uh, like the Palace Arts uh, and this facility is here is that anyone can come and use them effectively, which is crucial you know, uh, within the arts industry. Uh, again, that's going to create more um, vibrancy, which is crucial in the arts as well, and crossover of ideas. Uh, and just general debate, which is good for the area. Uh, we've recently, in fact, had an exhibition showing the work of their artists. We have worked with artists who are part of uh, the gallery TS1. Um, Alan Morley, I'm uh, a painter, uh, an artist, uh, and I've, I have associations with uh, other galleries uh, particularly in Middlesbrough, we are in um, uh, Palace Arts. So yeah, and I've, I've been here since the beginning. I was uh, taking part in, in their exhibitions and whatnot. Uh, I think it's one of the best art spaces we've got on Teesside because it's fully staffed, good sized space for, for art, uh, lots of wall space and uh, floor space for uh, 3D stuff as well. There's, there's no reason why uh, somebody we work with should not benefit financially and the intention is that the company should be self-supporting. I'm David Jones, I'm retired. Well it started a couple of years ago when I came to a, an exhibition here and was interested by what I'd seen, by the range of work and by the fact that a gallery like this actually exists here, which I thought was really good. I bought a, a picture, a photograph in fact, and I think I must have hooked up with them on social media and then Nell posted a message saying is anybody free to come and help with 
stripping out an exhibition. So I came along, met the people here, and just it just kind of seeped in from there. Then when uh, the previous uh, trainee left, and there was there seemed no prospect of a replacement um, because the funding was so tight. Um, I said, well, I really like what you're doing here. I think this is a really good thing to do. Um, I'll come, I'll, I'll give you a day a week. My name's Frank Briffer and at the moment I'm a full-time exhibiting artist. I guess I'm quite unusual because most painters obviously have their influences, which are other painters. Um, my greatest influence is a painter, it's a composer, an American composer called Charles Ives. He was working at the turn of the 19th and 20th centuries and he was, he was doing things way beyond what Europe was doing at the time. And he was working with quarter tones and polytonality and polyrhythms. Stuff that didn't happen in Europe until the 1920s, 30s. So he was a real pioneering composer. I mean, music suggests colours to me, it suggests structure. It does something and it comes out as a, as a visual piece, you know. It came about because Frank uh, visited the gallery, having been, um, I think, told by somebody that he ought to just pop over and have a look. I arranged a visit, you know, and uh, it's just such a fantastic space. Uh, you know, it's very big. The main, the main gallery is very big, so you can get a, a large body of work, a quite large-scale work, uh, without looking overcrowded. I, I think he, he'll have taken a look at this place, uh, he'll have checked it out and seen that it's a, it's a very good venue. I think it's, it's a venue like any venue, and I think that Newcastle is just a stone's throw away as well. I think art is, is about sharing, generally. So for me, the, the North East is as is, is far north as is, is probably Berwick and as far south as Scarborough and Bridlington. So, you know, I think it's all encompassing, really. I think it's all, it's all good. I don't know. I've not spoken to Frank about it, but I know that uh, one of his imperatives was him saying while we were hanging the exhibition that he'd never seen all his work, all that work, in one place at the same time. So I think, I guess, the fact that it is a good white space gallery and to have it given over to one artist is, is really interesting. And the other big advantage for me is it's got a smaller gallery and um, there's a, a number of works which are always meant to be shown together in a discrete space. And that place, which is slightly, with a smaller space, slightly removed from the larger space, is ideal for those works. So it just works for me on every count, really. Uh, it's just a great place. And initially he decided that he would have a solo show perhaps in the rear space of the gallery. But the scale of Frank's work and the amount of work that he has now accumulated meant that it was clear actually from fairly early on that it would be possible to fill the whole gallery just with Frank Briffer pieces. And this was what Frank decided to do really. He decided that he really wanted to take the whole space and have room to show some of his larger pieces and many more of them than would have been possible in the rear gallery only. I don't, don't think there's any problem whatsoever with the fact that what we're doing now is different from what we've done before because it fits in with the pattern that we have tried to establish in, in, in the sense that it's an established thing of ringing the changes. So the fact that usually we're showing the work of local people but occasionally with themed shows we're showing work from artists across the UK and indeed artists from overseas as well have sent us work to hang in those shows. Now for the first time we're showing the work of just one artist at a time throughout the whole gallery. That's just another different thing that we're doing. It is going against the norm but then you know, we don't, we don't move forward by standing where we are. You know, this is a new idea uh, and, and it's interesting to see how it works. I think it's really interesting to see the whole gallery with one artist's work. It has advantages and disadvantages, I think. The disadvantage would be that for a period of time, region, local regional artists can't hang their work. But people learn from each other, so I'm hoping that people will come along to the exhibition and pick up ideas, pick up tips, see what it can be like. I think whatever happens in this building is good. Whatever level, whether I like it or not, it's irrelevant. It's the fact that the building's being used, which is crucial, um, and they're getting some artists in that might not normally want to display their work here or work here, but 
a challenging as well. I think art's about challenging people, people's perceptions of art and their views, whatever they may be. When I saw the space, it just cried out. Um, see, I've got a lot of work and it just looked, as I said, ideal for the sort of work I do, because some of it's very quite large scale. Um, and it just struck me, I can get a lot of my work in here. And it's kind of in a way like a retrospective, I guess, because some of the work goes back a few years and some, and I've made some new work for it as well. So there's a whole range of work that I can show there, spanning uh, time, you know, a certain amount of time. And with the bonus, as I said, of the smaller space, where I can show this, this, this the show within a show, really. So it's ideal, it's great. <laughs> you know, earlier this year, uh, we had an exhibition uh, entirely of the work of a dead person, you know, when we showed the Henri Matisse work. So that was different as well from showing uh, contemporary local artists. So it's about keeping the mix, but the core of what we do will always be finding, celebrating the work of local artists. It's no surprise to anyone that Redco's, you know, been on um, in a lot of trouble, it, hard times, um, the gradual wasting away of uh, industry and manufacturing in this part of the world has had a profound effect on the town. The closure of the steelworks has been national and indeed international news recently. But for, for a period before that, Redco has been uh, on its knees, really. It, it's a town with some wonderful people uh, with a lot of gritty resolve and determination, but they've been hard hit repeatedly. There are a lot of closures, yes, and these are very challenging times for people here. Um, I think it's too early to say what the, uh, the impact is going to be. Um, that's why I think it's of use for it to be a community interest company rather than a straightforward commercial gallery. If it was a commercial gallery and it relied on sales to uh, wash its face financially, I think that there would be real worries. But it's a place to come and experience art. It, it could slow some of us down uh, because, of course, we do need an income. And if we can't access funding, we, we usually have to make sales or take a second job. But, so it, it, it can slow us down a bit, but, but we, uh, the, the creative process doesn't stop. We're, we're in a very difficult part of the country. You know, there's no doubt in that with, with certain closures recently. So we need something to be positive. We need something to, to give vibrancy to the area. I know there's a lot of talk about developing Red Car and obviously trying to get it building up again as a touristy area. And I think it could be really great because it, it, the, the location is, is spectacular. But the number of times I've been in, the place has always been buzzing, it seems to me. There's always been a lot of people there. There's obviously interest uh, from the local community. And just as an observation, that, that looks to me a very positive thing. If they can build on that in some way. It's brought a community of artists together because we all help out in some capacity in the gallery, whether that's invigilating, hanging work, um, helping for openings and that kind of thing. I think that's one of the things that the Palace Arts has, has done very well over the last few years, is to create a community of artists um, and, and to build on that. I met a lot of artists that I hadn't met before and they were all so friendly and I'd really admired their style and I was left with the feeling of being a part of something, being part of an artist community rather than isolated. Give me a feel like I'm ex exhibiting in a proper gallery yeah, because it's very professional. I think what we see as Palace Arts is that the way forward for the region has to be not to attempt to recreate the way things were in the past in the heyday of this part of the world with uh, heavy manufacturing, process engineering and so on, but to look forward to diversify the economy. I think if, at its most fundamental, one of the things that makes us human is that we struggle to make sense of the world. We try to make sense of what's going on around us and we do it in all sorts of ways. We do it through literature, we do it through music, and we also do it through art. People who exhibit here, whether they're sculptors, painters, fine artists, photographers or whatever, are trying to express something about their own lived experience. And when other people come in and see the work, sometimes it chimes with them. It's about who we are as human beings. The important point to make about art is that it's not just something, the value of which can be measured in commercial terms. 
Though it is true that public investment in the arts gives a fourfold interest, for instance, in terms of GDP, and research has shown that. So it's a very, it's a good way to spend money, um, public money, on uh, fostering the arts. But I think. For us, uh, art is about more than just tangible, quantifiable benefits. I'm, I'm utterly convinced. There's so many artists that show in here. Um, I think it's something like 200 artists have been through here. I've lived in China for a while as well, so that's the other extreme. And art and life is integral. You know, the whole thing of, of, you know, your feng shui and yin and yang, it, life, art, living is all one thing where I think in the, in the West generally we see art as a separate thing. It's something that you do separate to living. But I think in Western culture, whether it's lighting joysticks or whether it's doing Tai Chi on the morning, is, that, that's art. You know, that's a kind of enhancing your day in some way and we, we don't tend to do that. Encouraging arts in any area will increase well-being, will raise aspirations, and certainly we hope to do that in this area, for instance. At the moment, if you graduate in arts from, say, Teesside Uni or CCAD, the chances are that you will look post-graduation to move elsewhere in order to practice. That shouldn't be the case. We need to encourage, through providing resources, including exhibition spaces, artists to remain in the area. So it's about the feel of a place. It's about people being able to identify themselves as coming from an area where art and culture are important and feeling proud about that. There's an old proverb, Chinese proverb, I think it is, if you're interested in Chinese proverbs, that says, with your last two pennies, you spend one penny on bread to feed the body, and on the other penny you spend on a chrysanthemum to feed the soul. People need their souls fed in challenging times even more than in other times. The fact that it's here, people can still keep coming.